So I'm at this point on YouTube to where I don't trust half the stuff I hear from YouTube anymore because there's so much drama going on. There's so much stuff going on with these YouTube partnerships and these YouTube networks taking money from their partners. These people getting stuck in their contracts because it's a lock-in contract or, you know, other networks not letting their partners leave because they want to. I actually experienced this when I was up with Maker Studios or Disney because Disney bought them out recently. But I signed up with these people called N4G TV. And when you sign up with them, you have to partner yourself with Maker Studios. And I actually partnered up with them like January 1st of 2014. Like I actually signed up on December 31st, like the last day of 2013. But then they accepted me the next day. So I became an official partner on January 1st of 2014. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to be partnered. They're going to shout my channel out. I'm going to grow big on subscribers. I'm going to make a lot of YouTube money and I can make this a job probably. And now that I realized with me staying with Maker Studios or Disney for almost three freaking years, that's not, that hasn't come true. They didn't help my channel at all. They didn't help me much with technical support. They basically kept me, they held me captive for two and a half years longer than what I wanted to stay with. And it's actually pure bull crap. And I'm actually not partnering with them anymore because I actually found a workaround. Uh, there was a thing you had to sign called the YouTube Partnership Program. They say if you don't sign it, YouTube says that if your partner doesn't sign this by this date, they have to take you off the partnership. I didn't sign that for squat. I've been emailed. I've been seeing notifications. I've been text messaged this to sign it so I can stay with Maker Studios. And I'm like, nope, I know if I don't sign it, you got to kick me off. And they kicked me off recently. And right now I am not partnered by Maker anymore. I am a standard YouTube partner. And basically, I think with the standard YouTube partner, they pay 50-50. So if you make $100 in a month, they take $50 and you keep 50 um, I believe it might be 60-40. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it might be half and half. But that is quite a lot of money they do take. And the thing is, I don't trust these other networks. You know, there's other networks like Freedom. There's uh, Machinima. There's all these other networks that I can definitely apply for. I, I fit the requirements. I make enough views. I make enough subscribers. I make enough money on YouTube to basically be partnered by any of these networks. But because I was partnered by Maker, aka Disney, I just don't trust these guys anymore. Like, they paid me, you know, on time. They gave me my money. And, you know, I think there was, like, a couple times they didn't pay me for, like, a good day or two late. But other than that, that was pretty much it. Um, there's other people complaining how their partnerships have been taking money from their earnings. Like, I know there was one YouTuber who actually said he earned uh, $4,000, but he only got paid half of that by his YouTube network. And then he had to go on Twitter and tweet them about it and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wow, I actually got to suck. And he, actually, and he actually brought up another topic saying that there's other people having issues with, uh, with them getting stuck in their contracts. Like for me, for example, I signed up with Maker Studios January 1st, 2014, and I made a video a long time ago. Like on January 1st, 2014, I made a video saying I partnered up with N4G TV and then I had to go with Maker Studios, and I was like, yay, I'm going to be partnered, I'm going to get a lot of views, I'm going to get popular on YouTube, and yeah, I did work my way up there, but I actually snuck my way around it because I just spanned Five Nights at Freddy's videos up the ass, but this partnership didn't really help me. I mean, when I signed up with them, I it said that it was a year contract. You can stay with us for a year. If you want to leave, just let us know, and I'm like, oh, okay, but in their policy, and like the fine print when you sign the contract, it says you have to give them a 30 to 90 day notice before you want to leave like before your date that you have to renew your contract like say say like i signed up january uh first you're supposed to leave at the end of that year which is december 31st and that's when your contract renews but you have to give them a 30 to 90 day notice it has to be in between that days even if you tell them before the 90 days way before the 90 days it still won't count as you wanting to leave and it's pure bull crap so I didn't know that. I waited till like December 31st and then I was like, okay, next year I'm going to be gone from my contract. I grew big enough on YouTube to where I can join a bigger network. And I noticed I was still with my partnership. And I was like, what the fuck? So then I messaged them and they said, oh, you have to let us know 30 to 90 days prior. And I'm like, well, crap, do I have to stay with you a whole nother year? There's nothing I can do. And then they emailed me saying, well, you have to stay with us for a year. Is there anything else we can do to help you better? And I'm like, well... Can I at least get a raise or something, a bigger P a CPM, you know, a bigger split or something? And then you're like, they're like, yeah, sure, just fill out this new form. And I'm like, okay, all I gotta do is just sign my name, and that's it. So they they bumped me up from 60/40 to 70/30. So if I make a hundred dollars in a month, 
uh, I get $70 and then they take 30. That's way better than the 60 40 split that they give you. And that's way better than the 50 50 that YouTube, you know, does with you. And I'm like, okay, this is a lot better. But what they didn't tell me was that that would extend my contract a whole nother fucking year. It's bullshit. And the other thing is, um, the next following year, when I asked them if I wanted to leave my partnership, they said, oh, since you signed that thingy that was 70-30 split, you have to stay with us a whole nother year, so you can't request to leave yet. So I had to stay with them another year, plus the other year from me asking for a raise. So basically, I was stuck with them for over two freaking years when I only wanted to stay with them for one year. And it's complete bullcrap. But I actually saw another video. Um, okay, this guy's channel is named Ronin Pond, and he made a video about the YouTube partnership program. And basically, it's like a new thing you have to sign with YouTube and basically if you don't sign that the partnership that you're with they have to take you off of their youtube partnership and like i told you before they kept emailing me to sign it but i didn't sign it because i knew that if you didn't sign it they'd have to kick you off and because i saw ronin pond's video saying don't sign that they'll kick you off and guess what he was right they kicked me off and i'm actually not partnering with them anymore i was actually supposed to stay with maker until the end of december but they actually took me off recently, like earlier this month of August. I forgot the exact date, but it was like a week ago. So if it wasn't for me not signing that, like since I didn't sign that, I would have to um, stay with them for, you know, to the end of December. So August, September, October, November, December. That was that was like four months I didn't have to stay with them. So I'm glad I'm not with them. But then again, it kind of sucks because YouTube takes 50% of your earnings every single month. And it actually does kind of suck because I'm making less money than what I was making with Maker Studios. But that's the only problem I actually have with Maker Studios. I guess the other problem I had was, I guess, technical support. Because every time I asked them a question, because I would have issues with this on my channel so many times. I'd have issues with getting copyright strikes. Actually, no, not copyright strikes. I've never had a copyright strike on my channel. I had community guidelines strikes on my channel. And basically, community guidelines is like, you know, don't post... Uh, you know, porn, don't post anything that's bad, don't plus post anything gory content, killing, stabbing, anything inappropriate for YouTube, you know, like, don't do any of that stuff, but I got, I believe, I got two community guideline strikes, I forgot exactly what they were, but one, I know one was on a gun sink, oh yeah, I remember both of them, one was a gun sink, and yeah, how does a gun sink get community guideline strike, that was the most bullshit thing I've ever seen on YouTube, I got a claim on that gun sync video, it was like um, it was a April Fool. It was an April Fool's video. It was a gun sync. I did like a, a gun sync to the Darude Sandstorm song, and then I put like some you know crazy MLG edits and stuff. And I got a claim on that video for bullying and harassment. How does a gun sync get a claim for bullying and harassment? I tried to file a dispute on the claim, saying it was false. There is no bullying and harassment. I filled that. I filled that. I filled the paper out. They give you like. 20 words to fill in like why you don't want to I don't think it gives you 20 words but still like that's what it feels like if you want to explain the reason why it's not you know what it is you have to have more words than that but YouTube gives you like literally just a bar to fill out your reason all I could really say was this is a false claim there is no bullying harassment and literally the next day they denied it and I was stuck with that freaking community guideline strike and the thing is if you get three of those you get kicked off YouTube you're terminated off YouTube and guess what I got another community guideline strike within like three months of me getting that one and they go away after six months. And if you get three within six months, you're terminated off YouTube. So I had to deal with two community guideline strikes for three months. I had to wait like another three months for the first one to go away. But after three months of that gun sync one getting a strike, I did a reaction video to this one chick doing her grapefruit technique. My friend Blitz said, hey, you guys should react to this video. And I should have not listened to him. He said, you should react to it. I should have said no, but I said, yeah, because you know, I'm a nice person. So me and my friends, we got on Skype, we reacted to this video, and it was like some black chick, um, no racial if you're thinking of it as a racist thing, I don't know. But there was this black lady showing her grapefruit technique. Basically, she had a, a dildo in her hand, and she was doing her thing, and she was doing it with the grapefruit. Now, there's no nudity, there's no body parts showing, there's no bad things showing in it besides just a plastic dildo or whatever. And that video got a copyright or a community guideline strike for sexual content. And I told them that there's nothing sexual in it. Like, the most I expected was an age restrictment. Like, I even age restricted the video. I did it myself. I went and said the user has to be logged in and they have to prove they're 18. I also put a warning, a disclaimer warning in the beginning of the video saying that this video contains this. If you don't want to see it, then don't watch it. I put all the things I could possibly do to keep it from getting a community guideline strike. Guess what? 
it gets a community guideline strike. I con I contacted Maker Studios twice to fix this. All they did was saying we can't do anything. You just 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 look at the policy from YouTube about community guideline strike. This may help, and they sent me a link to YouTube's policy about community guidelines. It's bullshit, dude. They didn't help me for squat. This is why I wanted to leave Maker Studios. Like they're not bad. Like of course they're bad. They'll pay you, but they're bullshit. It's like. My current job at McDonald's, when I used to work there two years ago, before I went off to college, it was actually cool. I liked the people that worked there. The managers were actually okay. You know, you didn't get in trouble for every little thing. But, you know, after I dropped out of college, um, I came back here to live in my dad's house. And my dad was like, all right, you need to get yourself a job because your YouTube money isn't really going to help yourself and me at the same time. Like, all right, I have to get myself a job. So none of these places were hiring. So the only place I can go back is just my old job, McDonald's. And then when I went back there... It was okay at first, but I missed my first day of work by accident. And the thing is, they're supposed to call you if you're late for work. They didn't call me, which is bullshit. So I'm like, okay, I guess it was a mistake. So I got to write up and then I filled out the thing. I got in trouble. So I went to work and then, you know, throughout my other days of work, people are just, they're, they're just mean. Like everyone is so strict. You get in trouble for every little thing. And of course, there's some old managers there that I used to work with. There's only one or two managers I actually like. All the other managers, they, they treat me like crap. I, I'm an ex-employee there. I know how to do half the stuff back there. And all the new people they have back there, all the high schoolers, because, like, I'm 21, all the high schoolers are there, are like, 16, 17 or so. They don't know how to do half the stuff in the kitchen. Like, they're unorganized. They don't know how to do other stuff. But then when I get in trouble for one thing, I get yelled at like I'm the worst person back there. And when I ask them what's wrong, they don't tell me what's wrong. They just yell at me, and that's it. That's what I feel like with Maker Studios. They don't help. Sure, McDonald's will pay me, but if I make a mistake, they won't help me for shit. It's it's such bullcrap, and this is why I don't trust these YouTube partnerships anymore. I don't even know if I want to get partnered anymore. I might just want to stay with standard YouTube license or whatever, and they'll give me like a 50-50 split, which isn't a lot of money, which means I'm going to have to work more at my McDonald's job than YouTube because YouTube won't pay me much, you know? So this is the kind of struggle I'm having, like... This is why I haven't been making a lot of really good videos. Like, sure, I make the gun sinks. Sure, I make the Call of Duty funny moments. Sure, I make the Thug Life series. But honestly, the only two videos I feel like that are worth putting out there are the gun sinks and the Thug Life videos. The funny moment videos I do on my channel, it doesn't feel like they get a lot of views, honestly. Like, I uploaded two recently. They're both at, like, 4,000 views in, like, two days. But, you know, when I do a Thug Life or a gun sink... The views are like doubled or tripled that amount than, you know, a funny moments. And I don't feel like doing, I want to make funny moments. Like that's what I want to do for my YouTube channel. A lot of people say, hey, you should do more soundboards. I don't feel like doing soundboards. That just, it's too tedious to get fun reactions, you know. And it's really hard to do in Black Ops 3 um, because no one uses a mic on PS4. But on Black Ops 2, a lot of people use mics, but I don't have any Xbox Live Gold anymore. I just don't play Xbox anymore. But yeah, like. I'm stuck on YouTube to where I can't rely, um, you know, I can't rely on YouTube as a stable income. It's up and down constantly. When I did Five Nights at Freddy's videos, a lot of those videos got a lot of views, hundreds of thousands of views, millions of views, and I was getting a steady income. The reason why I have a triple monitor setup, the reason why I have all this stuff is because I kept milking Five Nights at Freddy's videos, and that's what people wanted on YouTube. It's a new game. People wanted to get a lot of, you know, views off of it. A lot of people wanted to find out the story behind the purple guy. I did a lot of videos, and they were good videos. I wasn't shit posting. I wasn't saying, oh my god, the purple guy probably did this. Whoa! You know, I didn't make videos like that. I made clear theory videos. I went deep into the story of Five Nights at Freddy's, made videos, I did Let's Plays on it, and I got rewarded a shit ton, and it gave me more money than these guns things it gave me more money than these funny moments and i was like well i don't want to do this five nights at freddy stuff but it pays well and then i stopped doing five nights at freddy's because i didn't it didn't feel like something i enjoyed on youtube i wanted to have youtube as a career i wanted to look like a person on youtube i didn't want to be another five nights at freddy's channel that commentates about you know the the wax on the floor oh my god there's wax on the floor there's blood stains on the wall millions of views you know, I'm not going to, like, put names out there of other people who actually make videos like that. But there are YouTubers who make really shitty videos about the game like that. And they get a shit ton of views. There's a lot of people who clickbait Call of Duty saying, oh, I got the boxing gloves. And they put the boxing gloves in the thumbnail. But the boxing gloves aren't even out as DLC for Black Ops 3. Yet that video gets, like, hundreds of thousands of views. But my hard work gun sinks don't even reach that amount. I don't even know why I have 200,000 subscribers. Mainly because I did Five Nights at Freddy's videos probably. Ever since I stopped doing that, I'm just, I just don't make 
that many views on my videos anymore. You know, that it's Maker Studios didn't help me out much. You know, I, that's what I feel like. And I feel like if I go with another partnership, they'll pay me, but they won't help get my channel out there. Maker Studios didn't do much. They paid me. I feel like I only have this many subscribers because of the Five Nights at Freddy's content. Sure, I have a fan base from the MLP fans, you know, from the bronies and all the other stuff. But anywhere else, it's just I was there for just one moment. And I was only there for Five Nights at Freddy's 1, 2, and 3. I kind of just skipped out on the 4. And ever since I stopped Five Nights at Freddy's, all those types, all those subscribers I gained, they're just inactive. And I don't even feel like a real YouTuber anymore, you know? I tell my friends, oh, I'm horse famous. And yeah, I do believe I'm horse famous. I mean, I go to conventions. I get recognized all the time. But I don't feel like a YouTuber. I, I don't feel like I have the title of being a YouTuber. I just got these subscribers from Five Nights at Freddy's videos. I mean, I could have just ditched you guys. I could have just ditched the Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I said that totally wrong. I could have just ditched the brony related stuff and just stuck with Five Nights at Freddy's. I could have just said, hey, I'm doing YouTube for money and you're supposed to do YouTube for fun. I want to do YouTube for fun, but it's not fun if you don't get rewarded for making the videos you want to do. This is the point I'm trying to get out here. Like, and this is just all I really wanted to say. I know I've been commentating for 16 minutes straight. This is probably the longest video I've ever made a commentary on, at least for now. Like I made longer commentaries in the past before, but I don't think this long before. This is freaking weird, but... This is all I wanted to say, guys. Um, go ahead and comment down below. Right now, I'm not partnered. I'm not making that much money on YouTube. I'm working at a second job at McDonald's. I'm trying to get myself another job that isn't food service because these managers here, they're, they're strict as fuck. Like, I want to go off on them, but I know if I do, they might just write me up and might get fired just for speaking out my opinions to them. Like, I really want to talk so much mess to these managers, but I know I'm just a crew member. They're managers. They have more power than me. They have a bigger say-so than I do. And I can't say anything. I don't. I, I can't talk over them. So it's pretty much all I had to say. It's probably just, I'm probably just stuttering like crazy in this video. This is not a professional video, guys. I, I, didn't, I didn't edit much. It's probably just some Overwatch gameplay in the background. But yeah, um, yeah, just leave a comment. This is pretty much something I had to get off my chest. But yeah, this is what I'm going through right now. Um, I might make more videos like this. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.